All right, let me start this video by looking back at number 18. We were making progress, but I um, was just getting bogged down on it, so I wanted to come back and, and look at it again. All right, so I'm going to erase, get a little more room here. So on number 18, all right, what we were working on is just trying to get it in some decently simplified form. So I noticed we had a 4x e to the x in this bracket area. So that would become an 8. So let's see, I have 2x squared e to the x plus 8x e to the x plus 4 e to the x, all multiplied by cosine 2x squared e to the x. We're going to work on this second part in a minute. But one of the things I could do on that first part is I could factor out a 2 from everything and pull out the e to the x from everything. So I could take out a 2 and an e to the x, but I can't take out an x. If I did that, there'd be an x squared left there. There'd be a 4x left there and just 2 left there. Okay, And then still have that cosine 2x squared e to the x. All right, so let me leave that alone for a minute. And let's look at this right here. So what we had done here after we did the derivative part in that previous video, okay, so we did, you know, we did the derivative, we did the first times the derivative of the second, which involved all of this then plus the second function as is times the derivative of the first, and that's where all of that came from. Um, and then I had to do, you know, the derivative of the first, I had to do the negative sign of that, and then I had to do the derivative of the inside part, okay? All right, so now this is all, this is times here, and this is times here. Um, so let's see, rather than doing that part, why don't I put that minus right there for one thing? Okay. So let me back up one step on this one and rethink this side. So one of the things I might do is say this is times a negative, all that's times this times this times this with that negative. So I can do a minus there. And then this is the same as this part, but I'm not really factoring it out because it's not a plus, that's a times, and so is that. So really, I have the 2x squared e to the x plus the 4x e to the x twice squared, then the sign with the 2x squared e to the x there. So let's see, if I take that 2x squared e to the x plus all of that and square it, okay, then I would take 2x squared e to the x times itself. So that would be 4x to the fourth e to the 2x. Okay, then I would do, you know, write it, let me write it down up here so you can follow it a little better. So write that twice. Okay, then I'm going to do this and this and combine them. So that's going to give me 8. So it'll be plus 2. Two of these, this and this, are going to be the same. And what they turn out to be is 8x to the 1, 2, 3. e to the x times e to the x would be e to the 2x. Okay, then plus 16 x squared e to the 2x. And then that's all being multiplied times the sine. Stop writing. Don't stop. Hmm. 
sine 2x squared e to the x. Okay. All right. So this is really 16. So if you don't mind, let me just erase that and put a 16 right there. And then let me see what I can factor out from there. So there's a 4, a 16, and a 16. So I could factor out a 4. I could pull out an x squared from everything. And I could pull out an e to the 2x from everything. And if I did, I'd have just an x squared. Uh, that would be just an x. Can I take out an x squared everywhere? Yes. And then that would be an x squared. This would be a 4x. This would be a 4 period. Okay. And then I'd have the sine 2x squared e to the x. All right. Well, that I could factor, but I'm not sure I need to. But I could factor that into x plus 2 times itself. This won't factor, though, here. This could, but it doesn't help me with the simplifying. But I could do that and write it as x plus 2 squared. Okay. But since this is here, I probably won't do that. Okay. And then I could pull out an e to the x from both of those, but um, that's pretty good. So now let me go look at what the answer key shows. So here's what's on the answer. I'm going to write it in blue. It's 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 times e to the x times cosine 2x squared e to the x. Okay, so for this one, that's that's equivalent to what I did. I just put this with that out in front is all. So that, that part's okay. So this part's good right here. Okay, I don't think what they did is any better. I just have my e to the x in front. Okay, now what they have on this next part is minus 4x x e to the 2x. Hmm. So they just have an x there. Oh, but then they have x to the third plus 4x squared plus 4x. So I like what we did because I pulled out the x out of there. And if I pull an x out of there, I'd have x squared plus 4x plus 4. So one of these x's together with that does give what they had. And then they have sine 2x squared e to the x. Okay, so we're good. This looked like it was wrong at first, but you see how they didn't factor out the x out of here, which I did. So we're equivalent. So that's number 18 finished up. I was a bit ridiculous when it came to the simplifying part. That, that can happen, especially on second derivatives. So just don't lose your way. Make sure you show me, you know, clearly what you would get once you do it. And then from there to the end, you're just working on simplifying, which still matters. Okay. So I would have left it right there. Pretty messy. All right. So we did um, through 20 on the last video. All right, so let's do the group of problems that deals with, has logarithms in it next. Okay, I may try to get all the rest of this done. Okay, let's see how long it just feels like it's taken. All right, so 21 and 22 kind of go together. Both of these are finding the derivative on 21. You have that on 22. You have x to the fifth, natural log of x, minus one-third x to the third. All right. So let's do those two. All right. So when I do y prime here, I've got natural log of something. So I'm going to do 1 over 3x squared. But then I have to do the derivative of the inside, which would be 6x. Okay. And then 6x over 3x squared can be simplified. 
because you can divide by three and knock out one of those X's. So you'll have a two, and then down here you'll have an X. And that would be your simplified answer on that one. Okay, so don't just don't forget about the chain rule. You got to do that part. All right, and then here we're going to have to use the product rule on this first one. We can do the derivative of each piece because it's just minus, but then we do a product rule on the first one. So that would be first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. Okay. Now the derivative of the last term would be minus 3 times 1 third times x to the second. And so 3 times 1 third is really 1. Okay, so let's just neaten this up. So x to the fifth, that's really x to the fifth divided by x. That's x to the fourth. We have an ln of x with the 5, x to the fourth. And then here this is just minus an x squared. Okay. All right, and that's, that's really not bad like that. If you factored out something, you could factor out the x squared. You might write those together since they're the same type of thing, but you can't combine them together to say x squared. So you could leave it, leave it like that. And a lot of times when you have like cosine or natural log of something, you might want that 5x to the fourth to be in front so it doesn't get to looking like it's you're doing the natural log of it. So that's why they they did that. All right. And then if you were in that factoring frame of mind, you could factor out an x squared, but it really doesn't get you that far because it doesn't wind up putting this closer together. You can't combine anything. So really either of these is fine. Okay. All right, so 21 and 22 involve natural log. Then 23 and 24 involved logs to bases other than E, so not natural log. So those are the ones where you have a little bit of an adjustment factor that you need to do. Okay, so when I do Y prime here, I do like I do for natural log and do 1 over the square root of 7x plus 7, but then I have to do the derivative of the inside right here. And that would be 1 half 7x plus 7 to the negative 1 half, and then the derivative of the inside of that would be 7. Okay. Also, when you do the 1 over square root of 7x plus 7, you have to do the, the adjustment factor dealing with the base. So down here, in that denominator, I'm also going to have to multiply that by natural log of 3. Okay? So let me have that written up a little higher here so I can fit that in. So this would be 1 half square root, wait, 1 half of 7x plus 7 to the negative 1 half times 7. And then really down here, I'm going to also have ln of the base. Okay, so it's really, you do that right there, and then the derivative of the inside. Okay, then you just try to get it all organized. Okay, so this would be a, a 7 on top. The 1 half means there'd be a 2 down here. This negative means that would be 1 over. You already have a square root of 7x plus 7, but now you'll have another 1 down here. Okay. That's this guy moving down. And let's see, got the ln3 down here. And then I'm noticing the square root times that. I could write as 2 times 7x plus 7 times the ln of 3. Okay. All right, and on that, 2 doesn't go into 7. But I could divide out 7 everywhere, couldn't I? There is a factor of 7. So really, I feel like I should have, right here, I could factor out a 7. All right, so that would be 2 times 7 times x plus 1 times ln of 3. And then the 7 would go. 
So I have 1 over 2 times x plus 1 ln of 3. Okay. All right, and to me that's better than what they left. All right, so this one I wanted just to remind you that if it's LOG with no base, it's understood to be base 10. So when you do the, the y prime and you do the 1 over 9x, you got to remember to do the adjustment factor ln of 10 on that. Okay. Then you also have to remember to do the derivative of the inside, which is a 9. And so you wind up having a 9 over the 9x ln of 10. And then the 9 will knock out, and you have 1 over x ln 10. All right, so those are the log ones. Okay, now we're looking at 25 through 27, which are logarithmic differentiation. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it. I'm getting really tired. I don't wanna to have to post a lot of videos. So let's just finish this. These are the ones we did in class anyway, so I'm not sure if you need them. Okay, but I thought I would go ahead and do them. All right, so 25, 26, 27, these are the ones we're, we're supposed to use logarithmic differentiation. Okay, so here we could have used a quotient rule with a built-in product rule and chain rule comes into play as well. Or we could do natural log of both sides. And when we do, that's going to allow us to stretch this out so we just have pluses and minuses. Okay, so this would become natural log of x cosine x okay, minus natural log of the square root of x plus 1. Remember, that's really x plus 1 to the 1 half. So that means you can bring the 1 half down in front of that. And then here, that's really a product. So you can separate it with a plus sign and have all that. And over on the left, we have natural log of y. Okay, none of this is derivatives yet. That's just using all the uh, properties of logarithms. So then at this point, I'm going to start doing the derivative. I'll do it in red. Okay, so the derivative of ln y would be 1 over y times the derivative of y. ln x would be 1 over x. When I do the derivative of that, it would be 1 over cosine x times negative sine x. And then when I do the derivative here, I'll bring down the constant, and then I'll do 1 over x plus 1, and then the derivative of the inside was really just 1. Okay, and then I need y prime, so I'm going to multiply both sides by y. And then this is 1 over x, this is negative sine x over cosine x, and then this is negative 1 over 2 times the quantity x plus 1. Okay. I'm going to replace the y with my original, which is x cosine x over square root of x plus 1. And then I have the 1 over x minus, that I could replace with tangent, couldn't I? Sine over cosine. Okay, minus 1 half times x plus 1. Okay. All right, now you could, you know, work to get this together into one term and then multiply those. Um, but this is what I think would be a reasonable place to think about stopping. Okay. All right, let's take a look at 26. Okay, so this one starts out y equals x to the fourth plus 1 to the fifth x minus 1 squared times x to the third. So rather than multiplying all that out and that out and distributing through the x to the third, and rather than doing the product rule, what we can do is logarithmic differentiation. Now I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out a lot. So wouldn't I have 5 times, well, let me not do it quite like that. Let me do the ln of this first. So wouldn't that be x to the fourth plus 1 to the fifth plus the natural log of x minus 1 to the second 
plus the natural log of x to the third. Okay. And let me make sure you understand that it's like that right now. Then you can bring the exponent down in front. using the third property of logarithms. Okay. Now we're going to start doing the derivative. So this will be the 1 over y, y prime. This will be the 5 times 1 over x to the fourth plus 1 times the derivative of the inside. Okay. Plus 2 times 1 over x minus 1 but the derivative of the inside is just 1 plus 3 times 1 over x. Right? So then this is what I want by itself, so I'm going to multiply through by y. And while I'm doing this part, I'll, I'll put things in the right spot. So this will be 5 times 4, that's 20x to the third over x to the fourth plus 1 plus 2 over x minus 1 plus 3 over x. Okay. And then the y I'm going to replace with x to the fourth plus 1 to the fifth, x minus 1 to the second, and x to the third. Unbelievable. All right, now we could do some distributing and it might like knock out a few things. Um, you know, we'd have three terms with, with stuff in each, but we're just going to stop there. That's what they have, where they went to on the answer sheet anyway. Okay. All right, and then on 27, we've got another one. They want us to use logarithmic differentiation. I put a lot of them because that was the most recent thing we did. So this is a tower function. So if we didn't do that, we'd have to do the e raised to the ln of 5x plus 9, okay, raised to the x power. So instead, we can do the natural log of this side, natural log of that side. Then the x can be brought down in front. Haven't done the derivative yet, just bringing the x down in front. That's not a power rule concept. That's the third property of logarithms. Then we take the derivative on the left, which would be 1 over y, y prime. Derivative over here, which would be first times the derivative of the second. Okay, and don't forget to do the derivative of the inside. Plus the second times the, der times the derivative of the first, which is 1. Okay, so that would wind up being 5x over 5x plus 9. Can't cancel out the 5x's because they're not, it's not a factor. And then here it's really plus ln of 5x plus 9. And I want to multiply by y on both sides. And then I'm going to replace the y with 5x plus 9 to the x power. And there you have it. Okay, so that's 27. All right, then 28 and 29, those are both um, ones that have inverse trig functions. Okay, so we're just going to use our formulas for those two. And on 28, we also have the product rule to do. Okay, and then on 29, we have the chain rule to do. All right, so let's see what happens on these. So on 28, you're going to do, let me do the derivative in red. For y prime, you're going to do first derivative of the second, and the derivative 
of sine inverse of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, And the derivative of the inside is just 1 on that. So that's first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which would be 16x to the third. Right. Now, that's basically it, isn't it? Just going to put that maybe over here. And that negative on the sign doesn't mean 1 over. Remember, that's an inverse. So that's plus 16x to the third. I like it in front so it doesn't look like you're doing the sign of it. Okay. That's good enough. Okay. All right, then here you, you'd want to look up tangent tan inverse and how to do the derivative of that. So that one is 1 over, so the, the outside function is tan inverse. That's 1 over 1 plus whatever you're doing the tan inverse of, which is ln of 4x, all getting squared. But then you have to do the derivative of the inside part which is 1 over 4x, but then you have to do the derivative of 4x, which is 4. Okay. All right. So the 4 would knock out. And I could write this as just 1 over x times 1 plus ln of 4x squared. See that 4x, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good right there. I think I would stop at that. Let me check. Yeah, that's where they went. Okay, and then we didn't do 30, so let me do 30, and then that'll be it. All right, so 30 is like example 5 um, from class. Okay, so on number 30, you've got the formula for the F. And it says, find the value of, so you want to find D, F inverse, d to the x at x equals f of a. Okay. All right. x equals f of a. All right. So here's the, the idea. All right. So um, first, if, if a equals 3 on... In, with respect to the, what's going on is with respect to F, the input is 3. What comes out once you plug in 3, it's not derivative or anything, that's just finding the Y coordinate, would be 9 minus 12 plus 8, which would be 5. 5 comes out. So the idea is for F inverse that you'd be putting in the value of the function at, see, so you'd be using the value of the function at 3 as your input. So you'd be using 5 when you get over here to the F inverse. That's the confusing part. Okay, so first, we know the point with respect to F is going to be the point 3, 5. The point with respect to F inverse is going to be 5, 3. Okay. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to come in, you're going to do, you're not going to find, you're not going to work on figuring out what the inverse of this is by using that process of interchanging the x and the y's and all. You're just going to do f prime of x, which would be 2x minus 4. You're going to find the value of it at 3. Okay. And when you find the value of that at 3, you're going to get 2 times 3 minus 4. That would equal 2. Okay. And so what you know from that, then, is that if you did F, so I'll go below. So what you know from, 
from that is that the f the derivative of f inverse at 5 okay so if you did the derivative of f inverse at 5 that should equal the reciprocal of 2 so that should equal 1 half okay. so that comes from that little box so we know that the slope the value you get for the slope at f prime of 3 should be the reciprocal of what you would get when you found the value of the slope of the inverse function at 5. Okay. So that's the hard part on that. So the answer to that would be 1 half. But the point of it is you didn't have to find the formula for the inverse of f, which would have been coming in here. And how you learn to find the inverse in Math 112 is to interchange the two, okay, and then solve for y. But trying to solve for y would be a bit of a pain because there's y squared and, a, and another y there. So it would be really hard to do, okay? So you don't even have to do it. All right, so that's it. Time for bed.